What's going on guys? We're back on another beautiful day actually. It's close to the 90s right now. Um, it's really humid. <laughs> Trying to get back into the swing of doing motor vlogs and whatnot. Not necessarily just putting out roll races and uh, bike rides, bike reviews and all that other stuff, but try to engage with the few subscribers that I have and I appreciate all of them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many I have, but nonetheless, whether I have one or 1,000 or 1 million, they all would matter. I appreciate everyone who, you know, takes the time to click on my videos. I definitely appreciate the people out here who um, are subscribed. Uh, watch the videos as well as leave their feedback. I appreciate you guys. Uh, nonetheless, like I said, the subscribers who um, know me, mostly all the subscribers I do have, they do know me. I have rode with them or I have uh, been at different events with them and whatnot. I appreciate you guys. Like I said in a previous video, not doing this YouTube for any kind of financial or monetary um, funds or anything like that I'm strictly doing it for a hobby we're gonna get moving here and uh, see what happens stay tuned guys back here I had to make a quick stop for gas I swear the tank grips the side tank grips not tank pads the tank grips they really 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 help for obviously holding the tank especially going through twisty turns or doing slow speed maneuvers really anything they hold your your knees and your thighs in place it's a huge difference coming from a bike that had tank pads or tank grips to going to a bike that does not have tank grips. Even with maneuvering the bike with one hand as I'm doing right now, the tank grips helped out a lot because right now my knees are sliding a bit. So we got caught here in some slow moving traffic and road work and all that other stuff that seems to be going on every single day here in Pittsburgh sometimes they got cones and everything else up and they're not doing anything they're, it's like they're just sitting around that's some places that I've seen but nonetheless we're stuck in traffic again this lane over here is blocked off I'm really not in a rush it is hot though like I said it's a pretty humid day it's in the nine well it's close to the 90s with the humidity and whatnot and it would serve me well to probably get moving around these cars but I do know the road up here is torn up I'm really not sure if there's a uh, gravel it really doesn't favor us guys out here on two wheels or girls out here on two wheels I mean there is a little gravel here there's a gra there's gravel over here roads torn up we all know how gravel can really mess our day up so I'm gonna take it easy we're creeping along here in this traffic just trying to make it to my destination safe and then make it back home to get in the air conditioning but I don't want to complain too much because soon it's gonna be cold the temperatures only gonna get to the 50s and the high of 40 no <laughs> no because soon it's gonna be gone and we're all gonna be wishing it was back I know me I don't do the winter time I'm not a big fan of that I'm not a big fan of the snow I'm not a big fan of it getting dark at 4.30. I mean, it's just, winter months are so miserable. And then you put in the factor that you can't be out on two wheels. The roads are cold, your tires are cold, and that's just a mixture for disaster. So I'm gonna 
take whatever days are left I'm gonna get out here and enjoy how many whatever days we have left and hopefully bring some uh, some new content that's the main thing I don't want to say I'm on a time schedule but I do know I'm on a time schedule when it comes to mother nature and you know she uh, she has her mood swings I could tell you that much falls on its way no <laughs> No. It's uh, October 1st, so it technically is fall right now. But Mother Nature and her mood swings and everything else, that's coming. Look at all this gravel here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's illegal, but I thought this was the better choice. Obviously, it wasn't. I'm basically in the same spot. I thought the right lane was going to move a little bit faster. I know people who have gotten jammed up switching lanes in the tunnel. But I mean, if it's to move some air quicker or to get away from some cars, I'm, I'm taking that gap. No question. wasn't about how fast I got out here. I was really just trying to get out here safe. That's the most important. I'm sure you can hear me a little bit better. Now that I'm not moving, we are going to talk about... We're going to talk about gear. Some people may or may not want to hear this or acknowledge it or whatever. But since I started riding, maybe the first, I want to say two weeks of me being on two wheels, um, I didn't have any gear. I had, um, I had bought some gloves from like the hardware store and I was just layering up uh, sweatshirts and hoodies and long sleeve shirts hoping that you know being a newer rider I would never go down or experience the concrete after that one of my co-workers I used to work with actually um, had gave me a uh, speed and uh, speed and strength uh, riding jacket a textile jacket that had um, the perforated uh, line um, you know the perforated uh, material on the outside um, you know zipper vents and whatnot um it was like just a regular entry level jacket and he literally gave it to me just fit me well it was in good condition it was only used maybe a dozen times if that i had that for the whole first season of me riding and that brings me to my subject of wearing gear what's appropriate for some people and what's not and to me uh I don't care how hot it is it's 90 degrees out and I have on this Alpine Stars jacket it's not the best looking jacket it is uh, used I did buy it used as well and um, it served me well it does have a liner that's not in right now but um, it flows air really really good for some reason every Alpine Star jacket that I have tried on it just fits me well for some reason it's not too big in the like the waist area and I know some jackets you can adjust that but it fits me well look at this person not even looking a majority of this season I've been going back and forth between the speed and strength jacket that I got and this Alpine Stars jacket and um, I was going to go ahead and buy a brand new jacket at the beginning of the season. I don't want to say I don't understand why I didn't. Because I know that at the time, I had, um, you know, other things to handle and whatnot. And I already had one good jacket. But I did end up buying also, I can't remember the model name of it, but it is an Icon jacket. Um, really good price. Definitely used. It's been, it was used for maybe a season or two. Um, no rips, no tear. That jacket was a little big. I did wear it maybe one or two times and 
the the overall look of the icon jacket it's uh black with uh the white icon lettering on it it did look really really good um i liked it and i'm not really a flashy guy i don't need flashy colors you know, don't need this don't need that i just need a regular riding jacket shoulder elbow and preferably the the back support pad in the in the rear and it had all of that it, it has all of that the only thing about that icon jacket it is a large and i currently i wear a medium right now um i debated on holding on to the icon but i think i am gonna um, post it up for sale possibly give it away with that being said i've always wore gear no matter what i know people who are capable they know what they're capable of when it comes to riding and everything else and this and that and trust me i don't have on full gear i have on uh tennis shoes i have on jeans that have uh tears in them which i don't have on full gear you can call me a squid if you want as far as riding with no jacket if you do go down i mean at least you're protected on your you know arms back shoulders and everything else i mean uh, i know your legs and everything else is, is probably just as important as your upper body but at least that's uh half of my body that i don't have to worry about getting uh road rash on or i should say too bad a road rash sometimes with the gear i'm in the wrong lane but sometimes with this gear it doesn't matter you know if you got a full suit on if you're going you know speeds of 100 miles an hour and up i mean hell even 50 60 there's always there's always them instances where you can hit a stationary object you know car could pull out whatever we know all that um unforeseen things that can happen and that predicament would really would really hurt you so gear in that instance wouldn't necessarily help but for me i wear it number one for peace of mind number two i noticed because i have uh I have jumped out on the bike with no gear on before. Just came out in uh, jeans and a t-shirt before, whether I was riding across town or I was riding down the street. One thing that I have noticed, when you have a jacket on and it's a sunny day like this, it's hot and humid, a jacket will protect you, not only from falling, but it will protect you from the sun and the sun beaming down on your skin all day, all day, making you sweaty. Now, yes, you do sweat when you wear, uh, you know, heavy riding gear, whether it's uh, the heavy colder weather gear or the, you know, the spring jacket and, uh, you know, riding jeans and whatnot, you do sweat for sure. But I mean, you are on a, a machine that gets upwards of 200 degrees. So therefore, I mean, it's a given. You are gonna sweat, especially in the summertime. I mean, we all know how that goes. By the end of the ride or the end of the day, you're sweaty. You sweated through maybe a shirt or two. And um, it's kind of miserable after, you know, a whole day of riding. But even still, I still wear gear no matter how hot it is. Doesn't matter. You're not gonna catch me out. There's people plenty of times, you know, say, damn, bro, I know you're hot in that jacket. I know you gotta be hot in that jacket. And hell yeah, I'm hot as hell. No question, I'm definitely hot. But when it's a sunny day, I know that my skin's not gonna be all burnt up at the end of the day. And I know that if I do go down, which I did go down, I know that the jacket is gonna protect me in those cases. I'm actually looking to upgrade my gear during the off season. There's a couple other things I may want, but when it comes to riding gear, this season I am going to invest. And it really is an investment because you're on this bike, you're on two wheels, you're amongst other cars that, are, that weigh a ton and more. And it's just like a no-brainer to me you don't know what they're gonna do 
and you don't know what's on the road all them different kind of things and we got some uh some police action over here i don't know what oh wow somebody rode all the way up in kfc like what is that about the old woman but anyway i hope they're all right back there but anyway um no matter what i wear my gear i might be repeating myself oh well i am gonna have that peace of mind that i'm protected like i said i did go down it was at a slow speed which was under 50 miles an hour maybe even under 40 miles an hour i did bruise my hip scraped up my elbow and bruised my shoulder 1000 percent that the gear did save me in that situation and i'm very fortunate and thankful it didn't happen earlier in that day because to be sprawled out in, on the highway, on a major highway with other cars, that's just bad. That would be a scary, a very traumatic experience to go through. In that situation of me going down, it wasn't my, it, directly it was not my fault. There wasn't nothing else that I could do in that position. And um, I'm kind of fortunate and thankful that it happened the way that it did. And that I did have gear on to protect me. Like I tell everybody else, you got all that riding, you know, swerving in and out of traffic, swerving in and out of rush hour traffic at that. That's just not me. I'm going home at the end of the night and I'm gonna make sure I ride within reason to be able to make it home. And I'm gonna do everything I can to ride defensive as well as protect myself out here. Because once you make one move, once you make one move on this bike, you got to commit to it and that's it i want to finish talking about gear what's the saying i think it is all gear all gear all the time or whatever that is that's what i go by that's what i'm gonna ride by and i'm gonna stick by yeah i get it you know it's comfortable to wear you know what you're comfortable with t-shirt sweatpants whatever you want to whatever you want to wear that's comfortable but personally, me being me, I, I just can't. And there's also a saying that everything is not for everybody. So therefore, that coming out in a t-shirt or just wearing a vest or, I mean, in reality, what does a what would a vest do? Okay, I'm just trying to think of it of the standpoint of when I went down. What would a what really would a vest? Um, what would a vest do? It's not going to protect your arms. It's not going to protect your hands. It's not going to protect your elbows. I mean, there's some people who will come out with full gear and no gloves i mean typically the first thing you do when you fall whether you're walking whether you're running whether you're on a bike you put your hands out to brace yourself so therefore i don't know what the point is of not wearing gloves i do get it like they call it uh dexterity they that's the the feeling you get when you grab the throttle, when you grab the brake, how much grip you really have on the throttle. And I get it. When I first started riding, the first couple times I took the bike out, I had no gloves on and no gear, no jacket, no nothing. And that dexterity, once I did get a pair of gloves, I did understand that. But now it's like second nature. I cannot ride without gloves, even though these are not the best gloves as far as protection um, I do have probably two or three other pairs of gloves but these are some cheap gloves for $22 $25 Joe Rocket they're like the, the lowest of the low there's no protection for your knuckles there's none of that so therefore I just can't see riding without gloves it doesn't even feel right 
it's almost like coming outside in your boxer shorts I can't ride with no gloves um, I mean I can but it just does not feel the same even though these gloves these cheap gloves do not protect me as much as like uh, the other pair of gloves I have or some other high-end gloves uh, Dainese the Alpine stores um, there's all kind of other brands of gloves out there that offer different kind of protection and airflow I mean just try them on go to a, a motorcycle shop and try them on if you can't find what you like or the style I generally shop off of Revzilla they're actually in Philadelphia PA so therefore they're close to where I'm at so whenever I order from Revzilla I usually get the order within a day or two usually it's about two days compared to some people that are in Los Angeles Texas whatever they gotta wait you know three and four days for just standard shipping me personally I can't go without gear you might be somebody that can and like it it feels good I mean I've seen the the, the worst in this city and I've seen it in other um, you know videos there's people that really hop on two wheels and they'll be in a wife beater they'll be in flip-flops and I I just can't I can't get with it I can't do it that's a nice vet there a Z06 an old man driving it typical Corvette owner I can't go without gear gloves being one of them the clutch the throttle the brake it does not feel the same so I'd advise people who don't wear gear to invest in gear just in case it's important I am going to invest in um, some riding boots um, they're not going to be riding shoes they're going to be some riding boots but it's probably going to be some um, Alpine star model they look good they're not the real high like track boots I'm going to invest in those just for added protection for my ankles for my feet so I'm hoping you guys would take this into consideration and do the same for yourself like I said I'm not perfect I got on tennis shoes right now with that being said everybody ride safe out there keep your eyes open because these people out here they're not paying attention for us they're not looking for us at all and I probably will upload some video of some close calls I've had this season and actually in the last two weeks I've had probably about a handful of close calls from people just not looking not paying attention not looking twice before switching lanes all that but I'm out of here guys you guys be safe leave your comments and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel there's a lot more content coming soon stay tuned we'll see you guys next time